welcome back everyone. So today I just want to make a quick video going over Nest.js configuration. And for that we're going to need to install Nest.js config. Alright, and clear. So normally I use .env and just use the environment variables directly. But that's not really best practice so I want to show how to use the config module. And the project that I'm going to be using is the Space Explorer project that I've been creating for fun. And we already have a couple of environment variables that we can use. I have port, the JWT secret, and then the database and variables. So the first thing that we'll want to do is open up our app module. And we're going to want to import the config module. And then add it to our imports array. The config module has a for root method which automatically reads all the variables from our .env file, but it does take an options object. And to make things a little easier, we could add the attribute of is global to true. And all that means is that for all of our individual submodules, we don't have to add it to their imports array. It's gonna assume that the config module is allowed for all modules in our application. So first I'm gonna be using the JWT secret for the first use case, and that would be using it inside of a service that's automatically injected. So that goes into user service. And what we want to do is inject it into our constructor of our user service. That way in our create token method, we can use that config service uh, to get the environment variable. And I believe it's called JWT secrets. And then in here, instead of a raw string, we could change it to secret secret now this is for a normal service but for a custom nest.js injectable where we're implementing some of the underlying functionality we're going to follow the same steps of adding a, a constructor and then injecting the config service through that and then wherever we need the environment variable which is right down here invalidate token We'll do the same thing and change this to a variable. But one important note is that for one of these special classes, wherever we're using it, and I believe I'm using this in the user resolver, we can't call new. We have to actually pass this to Nest.js for it to instantiate it instead. That way the config service will be injected properly. The next use case that I want to cover is how to use port because this is not actually going to be inside of any of our modules. It'll actually be inside of our bootstrap function in main.ts. And what you can do here is get the config service by accessing the app and we'll do app.get and we're getting the config service. And then with the config service, we can just use it like we have been in the other services. So that'll be config service dot get and this time we want the port and then we'll pass the port into app dot listen. Okay, and then the last thing that I want to show in this video is how to use all of these database environment variables. And that's because we want to pass an object that looks like this ORM config that we've been using previously. So I want to show how you can get variables that is a little more complex than just a string or a number. So to do that, I'm going to make a new file called config.ts. And while I'm here, I'm also going to make a file called database.config.ts. So first, I'm going to go to config.ts and make sure that we're exporting something in the config. The reason why it's a object is we're going to wait until the app loads all the environment variables and then Nest.js is gonna pass it into this function. And inside of this function, we're gonna return an object. And this object, I'm just gonna copy from ORM config and paste it in here. We're also gonna replace all of these field values with the things that are inside of our .env file, which I have to reference because I don't remember what they're called. So this one is db host. And finally, this one is process env.db database. I don't need this anymore. 
You can also add all of your other environment variables or configuration variables here, but it's not entirely necessary. Once you do that in your app module, all you have to do is update your config module for root method, give it the property of load, and we want to load our config file. And make sure you import it as well. Now we're going to go to the other file that we created, the database.config, and this is going to be an injectable service where we're going to be using a con config service, so we'll need the constructor so we can inject that. And we want this to implement the Typeform options factory so that our Typeform module could use these environment variables. And here we'll just do a config service.get and we'll get the database uh, object. Now the rule with the config service get method is that if it's all uppercase with uh, underscores, it'll get it from the environment variables. Otherwise, it will get it from the config file that the config module loaded. And now we need to make use of this database config. So inside of our app module again, we're gonna change this for root method to for root async. It's asynchronous because we actually want it to wait until our entire application loads before it loads the database. And inside the options object, we just want to pass it use class and give it the class that we just created, which is our database config. But the type one module depends on the config module, so we also need to add an imports array where we pass in the config module. And don't worry about circular dependencies because I'm assuming that this is loaded after the config module is loaded, so this should be okay. And then after doing all of that, your application should be good to go. So if you do a yarn start dev to start the server, and once the server started, your, app, your API should work as it always has. So we'll do a me here, which should give us a forbidden resource because we're not logged in. We need to add the HTTP header, so Let's quickly log in. And this is a mutation, not a query, so here we go. We'll grab the token, add it to headers. Remember the prefix is gonna be bare, and then paste that in. And we'll run the me query again, which I'm just gonna get ID and email. And we've logged in, so everything is working as intended. And yeah, that's pretty much the config service and the config module for an SJS and how to use it. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and found it valuable and I'll see all of you next time.